You're listening to Amazing Radio. This is Amazing Afternoons. Delighted to say on the line we have Paul Mullen from your code name is Milo. And that is very relevant because they're doing some long awaited shows at the weekend in the northeast of England over here in the UK. Paul, how are you? I'm good, thanks. Good to see you, Frankie. Uh, slightly jet lagged, but um, yeah, rehearsals have been going well. Sure, first shows tomorrow for the first time in 17 years, I think. So it's been weird unlocking that kind of my, that part of my brain and getting back into it. So yeah, it's been fun. Yeah, you've had to wait a while for these shows once they were initially announced. Was it COVID that delayed them initially? Well, that, it, that, that's kind of what started them, really. I mean, yeah, yes. Uh, we, I was out in uh, America, I've been out there for three years now, and um, but I just knew because of COVID, everyone was not doing anything. So, and and also, the main reason is for the Clooney, the venues that were playing uh, uh, Friday and Saturday this week. Um, at the, at that time, there was a there was there was a real shortage of funded uh, funding for for generally in the arts in general, which is kind of similar thing now but but um so we would we, we got together and we thought we'd you know do these shows um give the money back to the Clooney because that's basically been our home for it was our studio was just up the bank there in the in the, in the arches of the of biker bridge so we, we were down at the Clooney every single day we played there we did our album launch there our, our APs and all that stuff uh so we thought right Let's help out. We can get back together and and give raise some money and give it back to the venue. I mean, since then, uh, they, they've managed to get some funding, so which is great. So um, we're actually giving the, the the ticket sales and all that to um to the Bobby Robson Foundation for cancer research and treatment. So so that's where it's going. Um, and yeah, it's it's been. I think the original shows were meant to be in September twenty twenty. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, you know a little bit after that now but it's still <laughs> happening i can't believe they're actually happening it's made, we've made it <laughs> it's because it got put back so many times and i know there's a bunch of people that you know had had flights and hotels to come over and it's just you know it's one of those things so i was so hopefully as many as them can make it as possible but um yeah they are happening exciting things are happening um with you as well you're based in america as you touched upon Oh, you know, you're doing a lot of work out there, seemingly from your Instagram. You're very busy doing sessions, recording people, playing with people. What kind of things have you been up to, Paul? Uh, so I was uh, out in the desert, like Joshua Tree, for a, for a year or so, uh, working with IMX and Sneaker Pimps, <clears throat> um, uh, just doing some session, session work and recording. And so we actually did some video shoots with Gary Newman and a couple of other people and then we, we uh i moved into into la proper uh about a year and a half ago and yeah i've been re- last year was pretty much full on with uh kat von d uh i just been uh writing and sort of engineering producing some, some of her record you know being in the writing sessions and we did some live stuff as well so that took but that t- took up pretty much most of, of last year um and then i've been you know dipping into bits and pieces some solo stuff some some like uh just some rock writing and just some pop writing you know uh making connections learning a whole bunch of new technology just to be a jack of all master of none of <laughs> the whole situation you know looking at music directing as well so there's yeah a lot going on being very busy it's a i mean la is the the, the entertainment capital of the world so just gotta throw, throw your armbands off and, and get in the deep end you know yeah. So, mm, it's been how, fun. How how does it differ, Paul, from say London or or the northeast in terms of like that that scene? Or is everyone just really focused on their own projects? And obviously, if you're in somewhere like LA, there's a lot more projects going on. Is that what the difference is? There is. There's everyone's busy. Everyone's super busy. Everyone's got everything on. Oh, everyone's too busy in LA. <laughs> you know. Uh, it's so it's it is. You could make it work out there. There's a lot more resources. There's more studios there's more bands there's more venues so there's just like a constant fl- a flow of, of music creative, creative people coming in and out you know um so that that's different there's definitely less of a scene because it's so big um you and even even living you kind of just in i'm, I'm in like laurel canyon studio city area we, i just stay there pretty much very rarely going to hollywood because 
but, but I mean, you, you know, I think Hollywood's amazing, but it's 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 okay. Some good venues, but um, it's uh, it's it's a tough. It is tough. Um, but um, I would say you've just got to keep your head down in LA, you know, and it's trying to do your own thing and and use the resources that are there. Um, and it's it, you, yeah, it, you, people say it takes like five years to kind of get yourself sorted in LA, you know. So you just got to keep going for another couple of years. We'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> I do miss, like, I do, yeah yeah i do miss um i mean i want to get into film and tv scoring as well so i know justin from the guitarist and milo and now plays and editors he's been doing a bunch of that as well so that is definitely in 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 like the next sort of thing for me i hopefully trying to make it work um but i do miss the uh like the northeast and and um the uh, the scene and everything i mean we, yeah it's gonna be just gonna it's absolutely me- really flipping mental <laughs> to be back doing these shows at the community it's it's what it's such a trip yeah and yeah. when you when you've been rehearsing the, the tracks or thinking about doing this gig yeah i'd imagine you're dipping back into the back catalog and then does it kind of take you back to where you were when you wrote it when you released it i mean some of these tracks are probably you know 2004 2005 2007 along those mm-hmm. kind of lines when they were originally released and and although you probably listened to them on on you made you i mean did you make a little playlist and listen back to them for memory and then when once you got in the room you realized it just kind of rolled off the tongue anyway kind of yeah uh, a lot of muscle memory. If you start thinking about it, that's when you get into getting this problems start to arise. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, it's all still in there, which kind of makes sense because not a lot else has kind of stayed in there for me since. So, that, like, oh, that, that's why because it's all taken up with this stuff from twenty years ago. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, no, it's great. We just get back into the same conversation. Well, actually, this conversations have slightly changed in the studio now. It's more like you know, people have got some back pain, and you know, we'll the kids and the job and all that stuff. <laughs> Well, it was different 20 years ago, but yeah, it's still the same, you know, dynamic and all that. And um, uh, yeah, it, it, but it was surprising. You're right about like how it was still there and it just flowed and we were like, oh, okay, that's, we can still play these things and it still sounds heavy and it still sounds good. And yeah, um, yeah, we were quite, all quite surprised. So yeah, you, you <laughs> never happy. actually, you didn't actually, did you actually, you didn't split up, did you? You just kind of all got busy doing other things, didn't you? indefinite hiatus yeah we we, we knew like it, it, we got to a point uh and it was like okay you know it's time to just maybe try a couple of other things you know um we we were we were flat out for five years you know um a lot of recording a lot of touring and i think we just needed a bit of a break we didn't realize it was going to be this long um <laughs> but you know life happens and uh and yeah it's it, it's great it's, it always felt like there was some unfinished business with milo as well so it's good to kind of get that back up and running and you know we're doing these two shows we'll see what happens um, there's 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 a lot of talks about doing some more things possible recordings we know we're we'll see how these go first yeah <laughs> if we're any good live and then yeah. but um and then we'll, we'll go from there but it's been really yeah really nice to open this this little uh time capsule again you know yeah, I mean, you know, let's go back to the beginning when you guys first broke through and got signed. I remember it was it was such a huge kind of industry story as well, not just you know in in England or in the Northeast because of your your sound and your approach and your seemingly worldwide attraction from a very early stage of of your code name as Milo. And you you mentioned that some people are traveling to to come to these gigs. Promoters must be seeing your name on this you know on you doing these gigs and promoters must be thinking you know we'd love to have them on yeah no there's been a few people uh there's the, a few festivals this year as well that have been uh been getting in touch so you know watch this space uh there might be something <clears throat> but we'll see um uh yeah it's 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 been really good just uh, a lot of people come out and also people from back in the day as well have like are going to come up to the show we've got people flying over from canada to come and see us who've never seen us before it's it's crazy how this band has just kind of kept kept it uh, kept a little bit of a story going and um and people still listening to it yeah and it was it all happened so fast really uh, we, uh when we first started it was i just we, they were an instrumental band at the start and i came in and sort of just did an every i think it was like an audition and then justin just popped a microphone in front of me and said can you record on this i'm like oh, what okay i'll do it so i just 
he helped on a couple of tracks and then he sent it off to John Peel. And then uh, then in about six months' time, five, six months' time, he called Justin and we got into a studio and we got a Peel session book before we'd even done a gig. It was, <laughs> so we had to... It was, it was no, so we're like, all right, we'll, go, we'll best play a gig. So we played the head of steam in Newcastle. Uh, like, it was in two... I, I've got the poster somewhere. But I think it was, it was like March or February 2003. And then the next week, I felt like we went down to to London to do the Peel session, and that's where it all started. Really, it was John Peel, um, and from then, like, you know, we 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 kept ourselves to ourselves. Really, locked ourselves in the studio. If if there was any industry interested, we'd ask them to come up, see our world, see what we're up to. Like, you know, it's, we'd go down to London now and again, but we really kept our sort of identity to you know to being back in that small little space and 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 like a bridge and. Um, yeah, no, it was crazy, and and we signed to a big deal, and we done a lot. We worked with a whole bunch of amazing, uh, like producers, re- re- engineers, like Steve Albini, who did Nirvana, and then Flood, who did Nine Inch Nails, and U two, and Smashing Pumpkins, all that. It's it was it was wild, yeah. Um, and yeah, it's it was pretty nice. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, it's great that you get to celebrate it this weekend. F- finally, Paul. I mean. From the time when you signed, you mentioned the, those artists, you, those people you worked with in the music industry, and how exciting it was to sign. But you know, Amazing Radio is primarily a new and emerging music station, and lots of mm-hmm. we play lots of new music from artists, maybe their first couple of singles. And, and and as someone who still works in the music industry, Paul, how how different is it now to be in a band and getting signed and all that kind of thing? I mean, do you think it's harder now than it was then, or is it different kind of hard because of kind of mainstream exposure's gone. I mean, the enemy's gone since you last did a gig, as your code name is Milo. Yeah. You know, getting music videos on TV is kind of not even really a thing anymore. It's all on the internet, yeah. isn't it? But accessibility's increased, so that's got to be something good, right? It has, it has. And look, I'm I'm doing, doing this interview on a laptop, and that's a studio. Everyone's kind of got that as well. And, and before, it, it was kind of crossing over to, to that, just as Milo was sort of, we're taking a break, um, you know, before you'd have to go into a studio to engineer a proper studio to record an album, you know, with the, the whole thing. So um, now anyone can do it, which is great because there's so much, like, I'm so far with production and, and ideas and stuff. It's amazing. But, yes, you're right about the TV thing. Like, who, what what band can go on a UK TV show and, and or showcase the new, new music? And um, uh, you, it's tough, yeah, and what M- is MTV what does the M stand for it's not music yeah. it's like it should be RTV for reality it just seems to be that you know um, it's it's tough out there I mean and the only thing I would just, I mean I would say back then and I would say now is the same thing is just, just to be yourself and just try and write the best songs you possibly can don't try and be like anyone else and just be um, you know feel like you can do those that music in front of five people, five thousand people, fifty thousand people, it's the same. It's the same energy, same performance, and stuff. And and that is basically still this, the that should where it should start from, really. And uh, and if it works, then great. And if not, you're still being true to yourself. So you know you're not trying to be anyone else. So um, but it's always been tough out there. I mean, you know, I've, music <laughs> being a musician is it is pretty tough. But I'm in too deep now, Frankie. I've just got to keep going. <laughs> you know, in 20 years, I'm not turning back now. I don't know what I would do. So, yeah, no, it's it's it, it, it just about made it work. So I'm going to stick at it. You know. Yeah, good on you. Good on you, Paul. And I'm sure, you know, people are very excited about you guys getting back together for these special gigs and who knows what comes next for Milo. But all the best for all your individual pursuits as well. We'll keep a close eye on you. And uh, congratulations for these, these these gigs and your achievements so far. And we can't wait to see what happens next. Thanks. No, thanks for having me. Yep. Uh, yeah. yeah well, I'll send you some stuff, actually. Some of what I've been up to. See what you think. <laughs> nice one.